Why is Honduras so dangerous? One of the poorest and most violent countries in Latin America. Police fired tear gas at protesters, but it didn't stop them from marching in their thousands towards Congress. The gangs told me to either leave or choose the way I wanted to die. Escaping an economy battered by the pandemic, gang violence and hurricanes. These people are desperate. My goal is to reach the United States. Why? Because of the level of crime that we have in this country. Because of the lack of work, the lack of education, because of extreme poverty. But the acting customs and border protection chief has already told these people not to waste their time and money on the trip. Either that message didn't get to them, or more likely, they're too desperate to listen. Honduras, one of the most violent and dangerous countries in the world, constantly dealing with major problems related to corruption and extreme gang violence. And on top of this, only a few months ago, Honduras was struck by two major hurricanes, which wiped out entire neighborhoods. Because of all this compounding suffering, thousands have fled the country, headed towards the United States for a better life. Throughout this video series, I will travel all throughout Honduras, meet the people, and hear their side of the story. Do you feel safe living here? No. Not at all. Not at all. Passport. Where are those kids? I'm Carlos. Carlos, I'm Nick. Okay, so coming to you from Panama City International Airport here. Flew here from Brazil last night, but today heading to Honduras. Not gonna lie, I'm a bit nervous. I'm meeting up with a local guy uh, there today and he just told me the city I'm flying into, San Pedro Sula, there was a guy dressed as a police officer that killed six people in the downtown area just uh, a couple days ago. So although there are very nice parts of Honduras, it's a very dangerous country. One of the most dangerous countries in the world. It has the nickname murder capital of the world. It's consi consistently rated as one of the most, uh, the highest murder rates in the world. Gangs have a very strong grip of the country. We'll learn a bit about this country. It's recently had a, had a hurricane that's wiped through it. There's been mass migration. It's a country that's going through very difficult times, but I hope to see what it's like on the other side of the news and things and meet the people and see what it's, you know, like on the ground. So let's go. Down the bottom, it's negative. It's Portuguese. Gracias. Thank you. How are you? Thanks. Be careful when you're open in the other Okay, so arrived in Honduras. This airport here uh, was actually completely flooded not even that long ago. For about a month, this airport was out of use because of the hurricane. I'll show you a video now of where we actually just flew into and you can see how bad it was. So I've met up with the guy that I'm going to be uh, traveling with while I'm in Honduras called Amare and we're jumping in the car now gonna head downtown and uh, explore. I was here two years ago but more on the like touristy island side because there is quite like a thriving backpacker scene but it's mixed in with the you know unsafe areas and things. Anyway let's head into the city. These people lost everything. There's no, there's no insurance. From what I've been told, there's no payouts from the government. So we've come to this neighborhood. It's actually a driver's neighborhood. And you can see because of the hurricane, people that had two-story houses, many people that lived in these single-story houses went to the two-story houses and sat on the roof, waited until the water went down. So it's just insane, the, the devastation here. There's so much going on in the news these days. Like this kind of thing isn't really making headline news. It's just, um, Completely devastating. So we're going to actually go into our driver's house and see the damage, but uh, 
here with uh, Omare here. And Omare is going to be traveling with me throughout yeah. uh, Honduras. He invited me here. So you so want I'm to glad. showcase the country, right? Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So let's go have a look at this house. Go and take a look at the, at the place. This whole area was uh, flooded Up to the above the roof. Right. So you can still see and the people working. And this is the kind of uh, people that lost everything. And this is by the airport. We're just uh, mm -hmm. five minutes from the airport. <laughs> You can see some household items here, passports, old pictures, Dennis at here actually, our driver, lost his wife and his son seven months ago. And then this happens. It must take months and months for the, because there's a, a little bit of a smell here, right? It must take a long time for that to get out. The problem with these things is that uh, everybody tries to uh, volunteer and help and, uh, and give aid immediately after the, the hurricane. And to recover from this takes months and years. So after four months, people still are still in need of of, of help. Now the other things are coming, elections are coming, then people forget. People forget. No, excelente, muy bien. Gracias. Todavía hay viviendas que tienen este problema. Wow. Completely mad. Excuse me, where are you from? I'm from New Zealand. Excuse me? Nova Zelandia. Ah, Nueva Zelandia? Ah. Uh, no, from an American city. Not American, man. Okay, New Zealand. Right. <laughs> All right. This is for the uh, prints, huh? Uh, it's for uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like uh, videos about countries and... Sí, sí, understand. Uh -huh. So how long have you been doing this cleanup for? Vinimos en noviembre porque estaba demasiado... They just took out all the furniture because uh, they lost practically lost everything. So it's uh, they've been working uh, all this uh, all these months. All oh, right, so several months. Several months. Uh -huh. The mud was too soft, so they needed to be kind of uh, hard so in, in order to remove it. Oh, so they waited it for it the to dry. Luego la familia enfermó de COVID. So it's, it's crazy times to deal with the to deal with the with the flooding and hurricanes because we are in the middle of a pandemic. So uh -huh. it was not only one but two, two, two hurricanes. hurricanes. Back One, to back. Eight days. Okay. Eight One. days apart. Nosotros nos fuimos el miércoles en la noche y el huracán entró. They have had uh, several floodings in the past. They know that they, if there's a hurricane alert, so they have to move and they have to leave the, everything. After the first hurricane, people try to clean their houses. And uh, actually some people clean it and then they had this uh, alert of the new coming, so they have to leave again. And, back in this, to the same situation. Nosotros agradecemos a los voluntarios de Sparrow Mission. He's grateful for some missionaries from the US that came to provide and as a volunteer and help them to, to, to clean the houses. No help from the government at all. They have to endure and have to do it by themselves, right. basically. They promise a lot of things, but nothing comes. They are still here after several months without running water. Gracias. Sí. Otra cosa, He's eh, talking about corruption, that they say that they will give people some money and they, in the Congress, the Congress, and they, they say that they have the money to give to the people. That money never reaches the, 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 the people, the poor people, the, mm -hmm. the people in need. Gracias. Gracias. Bueno, Gracias. Bueno. 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 Dennis, our driver, obviously, we just went in his house. He lives here. So seeing as we're with a local, it's reasonably safe, but it used to be much more dangerous. This street used to be called Alley of the Crosses, something along those lines. This house behind me here with the bike here, there was five people killed in that house. Um, it is still controlled, but they don't want the attention of the authorities because there's major um, narco trafficking. So they're trying to not make it dangerous and bring attention here. Crazy.
So we're currently in a neighborhood called Rivera Nandos. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but every Honduran apparently will know exactly where I am. It's one of the most notorious neighborhoods in the country. This road here divides the gang territory. On this side is MS-13. Probably you might have heard of MS-13. Huge gang in the USA and in Honduras. And on that side is Tres Terrenos. Maybe mispronouncing that, but yeah, so, uh, hola. Good. We just came from uh, Barrios 18 neighborhood. So that's another huge gang here. Those are basically the three of the major gangs here. 80% of uh, traffic drugs into the USA come through this country. You know, you would have seen the kind of uh, the tattooed up guys with the gang signs and everything, maybe on some documentaries about Central American gang. That doesn't exist as much as it used to. It's a lot more organized now because they've really cracked down on those gangs. So they try to kind of like keep it under the radar a bit more so it's not so in your face as it was. If you remember in Panama at the start of the day, I was talking about how six people were massacred by uh, guys dressed in police uniforms. We actually just drove past, uh, apparently it was that guy's house who was massacred. Him and six other people, his bodyguards and other members of his, his crew. We just drove past his house. So this is one of the most notorious neighborhoods in Honduras that we're in right now. You can only go on this street if you go down any one of these side streets. Only people who have permission from the gang can go into these areas. Everybody knows that the Rivera Hernandez is a gang control area. It's, this is this is the carrier's land, dude. Right. Yep. Is this your first time here? Yeah. Usually I will never come here to this area. Right. Never. You want to get out of here, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You can tell. <laughs> Even the public transports, you see taxis and like minibuses driving around here. They're marked with a, a certain color. For example, there was one with green. And so each gang controlled neighborhood has their own public transport and taxis, right? Yeah. Now they are not just like uh, like they used to be before, just controlling the road. Now they are businessmen. That right. They have taxis, they have transport, they have properties, they have everything. So it everything started as narcos and now it's built into empires of business. Yeah, yeah, now it's more like organized crime. I'm from New Nova Zelandia, not no America. No America? No. I think you're America. Gracias. Uh, if you come back, looking for me, okay? Huh? If you come back, looking for me. Okay. Ciao. Okay, so we've come to this downtown area food court. Uh, if you're wondering what that was, that was a black market exchange rate. So I exchanged a hundred US dollars and you get a much better rate if you use those guys. And they're just standing on the side of the road just waving big wads of cash. 23.50 in Honduran money for one US dollar. We're in the downtown area now, so we're gonna go explore, go walking. Not the whole city is destroyed by the hurricane. Seemed to be that was the, the hardest hit area. It's kind of sad because it's one of the poorer areas, one of the gang run areas. Very, very kind people, very welcoming people. Let's go explore the downtown region here. So this is basically the main center, the heart of the city here. Got the cathedral here, and there's a, uh, a police station here. Lots of families and people taking selfies and things. Uh, there's a few young guys like sniffing glue, but uh, apart from that, it seems, you know, reasonably stable around here. So you're saying that we're walking away from the square now, but the further we go, like, it gets a bit more wild? Yep. Right. So we've come to these uh, train tracks just uh, in the downtown area of San Pedro. And you were saying that these have quite a significant role, right? This is from the Banana Republic time. Banana plantations came from the west. These uh, train tracks were in use uh, at the time. Right. So now it's basically dividing the city north, south, east and west. This area is kind of the 
poor, more conflict area and this is the wealthy area. San Pedro Sula in 2011 and 2014 was number one in the murder rate in the world. We were granted the name of a murder capital, murder of, the world. capital of the world. But now murder rate is a little bit down. Baltimore and St. Louis in the, the US have a higher murder rate than San Pedro Sula. Right. So that will give you an idea. Of what do you think has changed to make the murder rate get better? Uh, that's a tough question to answer. Right. We're going to go back to that one later. <laughs> So, uh, Mario, you were just saying an interesting point about this market here, right? Hey, how are you doing, guys? Good, man. How are you? Good. Good. Where are you from? New, uh, New Zealand. Oh, okay. okay. Nova Zelandia. What, what are you doing right here? Just making a video. Uh, making what? a video for what? YouTube? Yeah. Okay. What are you Good doing? To see you. Nothing. Just uh, shows and everything. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Right, ciao. Ciao. I was just saying that this is a typical Honduran market on the streets. People take over the streets. That there is impossible to remove. Them. Every time that the major tries to do or even relocate them, give them another place or whatever, there's tear gas and riots. People take over the street and they are selling and there's a lot of uh, money involved in this. Cheers. It's okay. Gracias. Gracias. Yeah. So we've walked up this hill here to this viewpoint. We just walked through like a very expensive neighborhood. Yeah, wealthy, wealthy. Very wealthy. Complete opposite of where we saw with the flooding and where the hurricane damage. A lot of guards and cameras. And really. the guards didn't want to let us in originally, right? You had no. to convince them. So it's quite controlled. It's, it's quite controlled. They decide you, who comes in. You even saw a, a kind of a tower, a garden tower, like a sniper kind of thing. Yeah, it very was, it was security. Yeah, it was funny to see. And you were telling me earlier that it's illegal for two men to ride on a motorbike. Yeah, it's, it's illegal because of the sicarios and hitmen. Then there is this law that is not allowed to for two men to ride on a motorcycle. Right. So, and I think it's not fair because why will the criminals uh, ruin it for everybody? Uh, uh, yeah. We just met a guy called Lenny. I'll show you that interview now. Tú me ayudas, okay? Okay, so we've come up to this viewpoint and we've met a, a young man called Lenny enjoying the sunset, right? Of course, yeah. Right, right. It's a great thing. And so you live around this area? Yeah. Pretty close. And Good. how is it living here? Because like, the thing is, is like this city has a pretty bad reputation, right? Like, okay. To be honest and speaking, like around the world, it's known as to be quite dangerous. How is it for you living here? What's it like for a local? Is it is it is it true? Is it dangerous or is it okay to live here? Uh, I think that San Pedro Sula City is a very important city in, in my country. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think. No es a dangerous uh, city. No dangerous. No dangerous. Okay. Es importante como parte de los hondureños eh, dar a conocer las cosas buenas de la ciudad. And it's important uh, as a Honduras that the, we can show the good side of the city as well. Por lo cual pues creo que San Pedro Sula is known as the industrial capital misinterpreted as a as a dangerous, extremely dangerous city, which is not. Bueno, considero que todos los lugares del mundo son peligrosos. There is a dangerous uh, in every city in the world, and if you do the right thing, if you focus on work and educating yourself, then you can change that perception of things here in San Pedro Sula. Gracias. Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. You heard Lenny saying that it's like not dangerous, and it, and I don't feel in too much danger. But then I've seen things and I've heard stories and then they were in the, in the city right down here a few days ago there was six people massacred so it's very blended it's, together with the danger is it's, it's a bad reputation and, and at the same time you come here and you have this relaxed vibe yeah. and this easy going smiley friendly people but the, I will say that don't fool yourself I mean bad things happened here it's not like a war zone, but people get killed, people... Bad things happen, like just two days ago, like six people were executed downtown yeah. San Pedro Sula. It wasn't, so it wasn't in like some far off no, no, bad no, neighborhood, no, no, it was no. in the center, in right? In the center city, so right. 
It's, uh, the city is, I think, is better than in 2000. I remember it was worse in 2014, 2013, but uh, still some challenges. <laughs> so back at the hotel now, we actually got picked up. We were walking back and these nice young girls that we'd met on the trail came and, and drove us all the way to our door. So that's a really good reflection of the people. People have been very welcoming and warm. It's conflicting. Some people say it's safe, but then you have massacres in the middle of the downtown area and we were in a gang area where there were people killed. Some people say it's safe, some people say it's not. Omare says, you know, stuff does happen and to, to hide from that fact is not really a fair view of it. In the next video we're going to explore more of this city, we're going to meet more people, we're going to go to different neighborhoods, some bad neighborhoods, some good neighborhoods. We're going to try and meet some people who are trying to migrate to the United States because a, a huge part of this country is mass migration because of the hurricane, because of gang violence, because of job opportunity, all these kind of things. We're going to be traveling to many different parts of the country and videos. Great to have Amari as a guide, he's a great guy. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from San Pedro Sula in Honduras. Good night.